In the headlines, PDP presidential candidate campaigns in Katsina pledges to restore peace and reopen borders. APC presidential candidate meets electorate in Calabar, says party on course to win election. Senate to pass 2023 budget on Thursday. Away from Nigeria, Burkina Faso denies paying Russian fighters with mine rights. Hello and welcome to Trust News Update. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thank you for joining. Beginning with political stories, presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party, Atiku Abubakar, on Tuesday in Katsina says he will restore peace to the Northwest region if elected in 2023. Addressing a mammoth crowd during his presidential campaign rally, Atiku also promised to reopen the nation's borders. Abdullahi Yamadi reports. <laughs> Thousands of PDP faithful thronged Muhammad Diko Stadium in Kazana to listen to the former Vice President Atiku Abubakar. The PDP presidential candidate promised to improve the economy and restore the lost glory of the state as the citadel of learning. Atiku Abubakar also promised to reopen all land borders to rejuvenate the nation's economy and restore hope in the minds of the people of Kazana State and the country at large. If you vote PDP, I will make sure university education is one of my number one priorities. Businesses and trades will come back to life. We will make sure citizens of this country are going back to their normal businesses without any fear of intimidation or harassment. <laughs> While receiving over 100,000 defectors from the ruling APC in the state, PDP National Chairman Yochi Ayu said the party is coming back to relieve people from the shackles of abject poverty. <laughs> Nigerians have had enough of insecurity, poverty and educational setback. All the infrastructure development in Kazan State was done by PDP. APC has disappointed people of Kasna State and Nigeria in general. Kasna State PDP governorship candidate and the Director General PDP Presidential Campaign Council, Alaji Akubulado Damarki and Dr. Mustafa Muhammad Inwa, charged the electorate to expose elements buying PBCs in the state. I believe in what the presidential candidate said about insecurity the economy, tertiary education, etc. For that reason, if you give us the mandate, I promised to carry everybody along to achieve the set objective. <laughs> this is a very serious message for everyone here. If you go back to your communities, tell those that were not opportune to be here to expose people buying PVCs and make sure you vote the right candidates that will improve your living conditions. PDP. The PDP campaign team had earlier paid homage on the Imam of Kasana to seek his royal blessing. <laughs> Abdullahi Ismail Yamadi, Trust Television News, Kasana. Meanwhile, presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, Bola Tinubu, has declared that the APC will beat other political parties silly in the 2023 elections. Speaking in Calabar on Tuesday during a town hall meeting with stakeholders of the party in Cross River State, Tinubu assured of his competence to win, lead the country and turn it to a haven of peace and prosperity for all Nigerians. The APC presidential candidate said Nigerians have been disappointed on several occasions but assured that the time had come to look beyond and focus on the development of the country which holds a better history for all. He went on to reconcile the party's governorship candidate in the state, Senator Basi Otu, and his co-contender, Senator John Eno.
progressive driving Nigeria forward. It's the only reason why I'm running. What is my concern? Is development of Nigeria. Individually, this is a talented country. God bless this country. It is our own fault. Anger will not solve it. Division will not solve it. Breaking apart will not solve it. It is only in togetherness. By building a team of intellectuals, brilliant minds, great thinkers, good visioners, that we can build a country. The Independent National Electoral Commission has signed a memorandum of understanding with National Union of Road Transport Workers and Maritime Workers Union of Nigeria to mobilize the transport unions on the scale and dimension of transportation requirements for the 2023 elections. Neil Samson reports. There are about 170,000 polling booths in Nigeria's 36 states and 774 local government areas, which makes the distribution of materials and equipment very paramount. Hence, the involvement of transport unions who will be shouldered with the responsibility of transportation of elections materials and personnel. Over the years, the Commission has come to rely on the partnership with the NURTW and NATO to provide vehicles for the successful deployment of personnel and election materials. However, in view of the challenges we encountered in the riverine areas of the country, it has become necessary to include the Maritime Workers Union of Nigeria, comprising sailors, dock workers, and those in related trades in our logistic planning and delivery. INEC is now in partnership with three unions, the National Union of Road Transport Workers, and the National Association of Road Transport Owners for Land Transportation and the Maritime Workers Union of Nigeria for the riverine areas. Stakeholders who are involved in these logistics activities pledge the support to the Commission to help have a successful 2023 post. Everybody has spoken. What is important is commitment. Commitment, dedication to serve this great country. We are here on behalf of the Union to say a very big thank to you, sirs, and to let you know that we are going to support this our program to make it as successful as everybody has spoken. I therefore call on all the stakeholders to take this as such with high sense of responsibility. I want to appeal to all of us to put in our very best this MOU therefore commend all the stakeholder workers more closer towards achieving the above goals. However, the Commission seized the opportunity to ask the leaders of these unions to appeal to the members to go get their PVCs to enable them to vote during the elections. Noel Samson, Trust TV News, Abuja. Speaker of the House of Representatives Femi Bajabiamila and President Muhammadu Buhari held a closed-door meeting in the Villa Abuja to discuss critical national issues. The Speaker, while briefing State House correspondents at the end of the meeting on Tuesday, said his discussion with the President centered on next year's general elections, associated rising violence and the controversies trailing the recently introduced cashless policy. Wajabia Mila, who also reacted to the Gudaji Kazore stamp duties funds controversy, said that the matter the member was involved with had nothing to do with the National Assembly. Kazore alleged that he was deliberately being denied access to, pre to present the preliminary report of the committee's 
uh, set up by the president to look into the alleged stamp duty funds being withheld by the CBN. Gajabia Miller also ruled out an intervention from the House of Representatives unless it became necessary as the matter had nothing to do with the legislature. Um, no, Kazare, um, from my understanding, has a, did not, does not have, um, was not, uh, he's working um, 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 with whoever he's working with. Um, if, it, if it necessitates the House coming in, we will come in. If he, if he has a, an official function, he should go ahead and do his work. Um, but this has so, nothing to do with National Assembly, not that I know of. No, no, no. It was not based on a resolution of the National Assembly. It was not based on a, a motion from the National Assembly. I believe um, he said he had um, executive um, authority to do what he's doing. Um, 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 and if that be the case, I mean, then it's got nothing to do with the National Assembly. Well, the House can only call Kazare to order to the extent that he's impugning on the integrity of the House or individuals or leadership of the House that have nothing to do with what he's doing. Um, um, I think it's important to separate the two. If he has a mandate to do something, when well, that's, um, that, that's on him. Um, we, we have asked, we have asked, um, when it came up, we, we have asked um, um, members of the executive, they said um, they were not aware of any mandate or such mandate has been withdrawn. Um, I don't want to get into it. Um, I don't want to get into it, um, except to the extent that he tries to, or he attempts to impugn on the integrity of members of the House, and that's a no-no. We have nothing to do with this. It's the regular routine um, discussions on state matters and um, uh, and uh, of national interest. Um, I haven't seen the president um, in a little while. He's been away. Uh, he just got back. It's of course also its birthday, uh, but more importantly, we had to discuss um, issues um, 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 surrounding um, state matters. You're watching the news update on Trust Television. Coming up shortly. We'll take a look at how stolen assets return to original owners. Details of this and more after the break. <music> This is Trust TV, documenting the Nigerian story. Let's go over the headlines again. PDP presidential candidate campaigns in Katsina pledges to restore peace and reopen borders. APC presidential candidate meets electorate in Calabar, says party on course to win election. Now, the National Assembly will pass the 2023 appropriation bill on Thursday. President of the Senate, Ahmed Lawan, gave the hint during Tuesday's plenary when he read a letter transmitted to the parliament from President Muhammadu Buhari on the finance bill 2022. He said the finance bill seeks to support the implementation of the 2023 budget in the areas of tax equity response to climate changes. So much colleagues, because we are closing for Christmas and New Year recess within this legislative week, this bill will now 
be referred to our Committee on Finance based on our Standing Order 1B, so that the Committee on Finance is able to bring back the report tomorrow for us to consider either tomorrow or Thursday. The budget itself, the budget report will be presented either tomorrow or latest by Thursday for the consideration of the Senate. So this bill, the Finance Bill 2022, is referred to our Committee on Finance to report back tomorrow. Zamfara State Governor Bello Matawale has confirmed that scores of civilians and soldiers lost their lives during the military airstrike against terrorists at Melele and Mutunji communities in Maru local government areas of the state last Sunday. The governor, however, did not disclose the exact number of the people that lost their lives in the incident. He said that the Zamfara State Government will support the victims and their families to cope with the trying moment of their lives. The governor explained that the security forces carried out onslaught against suspected terrorists who have been terrorizing innocent citizens at Melele and Mutunji communities when the collateral damage occurred. For me, to address you, this has been about the ongoing crackdown on the tourist bandits who have been terrorizing locals around inside the elements, particularly at Malili and Motunji district and nearby communities in the first time. As you are aware, on Sunday, the 18th day of December 2022, our security forces carried out a well coordinated aerial and ground onslaught on the bankly of the Kalstrand bandits who are planning to invade Mutunji, Malele, and other surrounding villages on the Dansado uh, district. The successful preemptive offensive by the Ghana military forces has yielded significant results. Also of commendation, several bandits have been neutralized, their settlement destroyed, and a large cache of their weaponry recovered. Speaker of Taraba State House of Assembly, Professor Joseph Albasu Kunini, has resigned from his position citing personal reasons. His resignation notice was contained in a letter transmitted to the lawmakers on Wednesday and was read by the Deputy Speaker Mahan Nadama Ibn Abdullahi, who presided over the sitting. The Chief Whip of the Assembly, John Kizito, Bonzena, who represents uh, Zing State constituency, was unanimously elected by the lawmakers as the new speaker. Bonzina, while speaking after his emergence as the new speaker, denied the allegation that a palace coup was staged by the members to remove the speaker from office. While soliciting the support of his colleagues, he promised to work round the clock to build on the achievements of the former speaker. I want to take this opportunity to welcome you to Taraba State House of Assembly. I have been in the leadership and I know how friendly the past administration has been with the press. So what really happened this morning is normal in any State House of Assembly. Or either State House of Assembly or National Assembly, it is normal. The, the former speaker resigned based on personal reasons. And as a house, we don't allow vacancy. That is why a new speaker was elected today. And by the grace of God, I happen to be the one that was elected to succeed him. So it is not a public school. He is still one of us. He is so dear to me. I'm very close to him, and he is also very close to me. Nigeria's government on Tuesday received 22 bronzes stolen from the Benin Kingdom by colonial administrators over a century ago, just as it tasked Britain and other countries holding on to such cultural assets to take a cue and return them where they belong. Trust TV's Shafiu Suleiman reports that the returned artifacts were officially handed over to the Nigerian government in line with signed agreement between the two countries. 
It was a solemn and emotional event for both countries as 22 of the repatriated artifacts originally belonging to the Benin Kingdom returned home. It was a result of years of negotiations between the two countries anchored on sustained mutual relationship and trust. I want to thank the federal government of Germany and its officials for these unprecedented moves that culminated in this event. In particular, I want to thank the heads of government and governments of the various German regions and their officials. I want to announce that Nigeria is not only seeking the return of Benin bronzes, but all Nigerian antiquities that were illegally or illicitly exported. It belongs to us and, um, and it's rightfully ours and uh, should be where, uh, it, you know, where it belongs, which is here. But nevertheless, we will share it with the world because for us, it is, uh, it, it is a common uh, human uh, asset. To the German government, in whose custody the stolen artifacts were kept for over a hundred years, it's time to right the wrong and return the treasures to where they belong. What would it mean to us to be deprived of our cultural heritage? Not to be able to marvel the Gutenberg Bible in Mainz, to be unable to admire Martin Luther's writings, to stand in front of a sculpture by Käthe Kollwitz in Berlin or at Goethe's desk in Weimar. It evokes a sense of loss that I can hardly imagine. To you here in Nigeria, however, this loss has been your reality for your whole life. Today, we are here to return the Benin Bronxes to where they belong. This historic moment that brings together not only our two countries, but also our two continents, Europe and Africa, marks the start of something new, a different way of coming together that is grounded in mutual respect and interest in one another and is driven by the desire to learn from each other. And for Nigeria and Benin Kingdom, which the Minister of Information and Culture, Lai Mohamed, says is on its way to becoming West Africa's cultural hub. It is a dream come true as they reunite with their cultural heritage and identity. Shapiro Suleiman, Trust TV News, Abuja. Now, away from Nigeria, Burkina Faso's Mines Minister on Tuesday denied an allegation by the President of Ghana that Burkina Faso had paid Russian mercenaries by giving them the rights to a mine. Ghanaian President Nana Kufuado caused a controversy by st stating last week that uh, Burkina Faso had hired mercenaries from Russia's Wagner Group to help it fight Islamist militants. Burkina Faso's government has not formally confirmed or denied the allegation that it has made an agreement with Wagner but it summoned the Ghanaian ambassador for a meeting on Friday to explain the president's remarks. The Burkina Bay government did recently award a new exploration permit to Russian firm No Gold for a gold mine in Yamogo in the center north region, Bosim said. But the company has been active in Burkina Faso for over a decade. The prospects of the group expanding its presence in Africa has troubled Western powers such as France and the United States, who say it exploits mineral resources and commits human rights abuses in countries where it operates. And that's a wrap on Trust News Update. Watch more via all our social media platforms and also on our YouTube channel. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.